Hey guys, it's May May, and recently I was watching some crafty videos, and I saw one that was a person going through their um, crafting rolling cart and saying what they keep in their rolling cart. And I was like, that's an interesting concept for a video. I thought, I don't use a rolling cart, but what do I use where I keep the, the things I use the most? And it is my craft caddy. This is a little caddy that I sit on my desk. If you saw my recent room tour, which would have gone up on Saturday night, that, that video, you'll see where this sits to the right-hand side of me at my desk. And it keeps really the things I want every single time I create anything next to me. So I thought we'd go through it and I'll show you what it is. Now, I love the little caddy. I bought it at Dollar General ages ago. I mean, ages, like years ago. See, it's like a little um, plastic kind of wicker looking um, caddy. What I really like about it is it's shorter in the front than the back. So it really lets me see all of my items really easily. And it's also divided, so different things sit in different areas. I love that. What I'm going to do today is go through every little division and show you what I keep in them. And I think it'll be interesting. You'll, I think it will be. It's going to be kind of a long video because I want to talk about all of the items. So I'm going to move the caddy off to the side. We're going to start with what's in this first little pocket. So I'll move this off to the side here and bring these items out. I'm just going to lay them down and I'm just going to talk about them. Now, why do I think this is an important video? To be honest with you, I just think this is a good way for you guys to learn about some items you may not even know about that mean so much to me that I keep them where I can grab them. And if I go to a crop, I literally grab these things and put them into a bag and take them with me because these are the things that I craft with constantly. Okay, let's start talking. This guy right here, the Ergo Bone Folder. This is one of those items that I say to you, you don't need it until you get it, and then you don't know how you craft it without it. I don't know why we love it so much, but Shannon and I both have talked about how we lean to this for so many different things, um, and we love having it. You can score with it if you want, and you can crease with it, and it has this nice rounded edge, so you can really crease without getting any kind of marks on the page. And we just use it for everything. Now, I will tell you, I don't typically keep this in my caddy. I usually lay it beside the caddy. The reason for that is it's a little too short and it gets hidden. And I like to know where it's at at all times. So, I just lay it on my desk next to it. But I wanted to make sure to tell you about that one because I use it a lot. Now, the next thing, let's go to these guys since they're laying here. So, these are my Cricut spatulas. Now, this spatula, the blue-handled one or the aqua-handled one, is the current spatula that Cricut offers. Like, if you want to go buy one now in one of their kits, this would be the one you could get. This one is the one from way back in the day. Do you see the green and the gray? I've had this one since I was crafting in my craft room at home doing videos. I love this spatula. I wish they still had this shape. I, saw, I find that I use it more than any other one. And it stays in my caddy for a couple of reasons. Number one, I have my Cricut Joy sitting next to me. So this is very handy to remove things off the mat. But number two, if you know me at all, I end up having to do a lot of magnet implants. And these go work really well to do a magnet implant. If you don't know what it is, stick around. You'll see me do one at some point in time. And there's so many other uses for these guys that I use. One reason I really love this one is how thin it is on the end. This one's fairly thin, but it's just a little more um, blunt than this one. And I love it. So if you have this guy, hold on to it. Don't get rid of it. It's fantastic. So keep my spatulas close. This is a funny one. You've probably never seen me use this, but this is a brush from the Perfect Pearl set that Rangers makes, that Ranger makes. And I love this guy. I find that I use it when I maybe have like an eraser mess or I don't know. I rarely use glitter or Perfect Pearls and stuff like that. But I just fell in love with this brush. And every now and then I'm like, oh, I need a little brush. And this will just kind of clean things off. It's probably the hairdresser in me because at the end of every haircut, we used a brush to clean necks off back in the day. And uh, I just need this to clean things. So I hung on to it because I love the um, bristles and it stays in my caddy. All right, let's do this one. So this is my snow marker. Now, I don't use this all year long. I only use it, you know, in the wintertime or when I'm making Christmas things and stuff like that. But I like keeping it in my caddy because I like to store it like this. And it just is a good place to keep it. So I put it in there and hang on to it right in my caddy. So when I need it, it's stored upside down so that it's not drying out, if that makes sense. So that's where I keep that one. This is my um, Prismacolor Blender Pencil my for color pencils. If you color pencil color and don't have one of these, even if you don't have Prismacolor pencils, you need this. This comes in a two pack. I keep one with me here. Um, I think I have another one in with my color pencils. I'm not sure, but I know I keep one in my caddy because I'll be coloring and go, ooh, I wanna blend this. And this guy blends 
So far, it blends every color pencil I've ever used it with. It does a beautiful job. You can see it's just a clear, it's not white, it's just clear, and it just blends everything together, and I love it, and I keep it in my caddy. So, grab some of those. You'll be, if you have color pencils, you'll love that. This guy, I hang on to him. This is my Aquaflow pen. Now, what this is, is it's a brush pen. You can see it's like a paintbrush, right? It has an area, let me open it like this. It has an area where you can fill it with water, and so basically, it's just a watercolor brush, right? What I love about it, a couple things, is I like that I can have water handy all the time. I don't always need water. I don't always do watercolor and stuff like that, but sometimes I just need a little bit of water for something, and I can do this and squeeze some out onto my glass mat, and I don't have to go to the sink or whatever. Yeah, that's a little lazy, but it's true. I can do that. The other reason I like to keep it is sometimes I use my color pencils, my watercolor pencils, and it's handy to have in my caddy. Um, and I would travel with this. I would take it with me because I think it's handy. Okay, this guy. This is the Memento Dual Marker. This one gets used constantly. This one I've even had to replace. I rarely rep replace a marker because I don't really wear them out, but this one I've had to replace. This is this is not my new one. I think the new one is over on the desk. Shannon was crafting over there. I can tell because this one's kind of beat up, but the new one looks pristine. Um, but I keep this in my caddy because anytime you're doing fussy cutting, this brush nib on the end is perfect to kind of paint around or color around the sides of your fussy cut piece to make it look like you did a perfect job. Also, another reason you should keep this, if you, like me, use Memento ink or even with your um, Onyx Black ink, if you ever stamp something and you don't get a really good impression or you skip a spot or something like that, you can use this end to color in on your like bolder images and this end will color in lines and things. See how thin that one is? Will color in lines. I've even used this to color in like if I had a lead Letter that skipped, I can just draw a line to fill in the letter on a stamp, and it's great for that. So keep this one handy. Now then, this Sharpie I picked up on accident. It came out of the other side. We'll talk about that one in a minute. These guys, these are jelly rolls. I typically have um, blue, red, brown, trying to think of all the colors. I typically have more colors in my caddy, but my caddy was getting full of other things, so I pulled out the colors I don't use all the time and put them in another caddy I have in the room, but these are the ones I find I use. Now, this one I use more in the winter time, and we're just coming out of that for me, so that one is still in there because of that. I will move it to the other colors soon enough, but these guys never leave the caddy, okay? So, my favorite is the number 10 Jelly Roll in white. This is my favorite one. Do you see that? I use this. I'm going to put my hand behind it so it'll stop focusing. I use this all the time. I never want to be without it so much so that I have two in my bin or in my caddy. These guys, they just make the prettiest stitches. It's a nice thick line. You can really see it. You don't you don't really get skips like how some white pens can skip. These don't really do that, and I love them. So I keep those handy. I also have a 5 and then this one is an eight in the black. Now we sell these in the store in a three pack and also individually. So you can get a three pack of white, a three pack of black or buy them individually. Also, I will link all the products I'm showing you today in the description. You can pick them up at our store at maymaymadeit.com and I'll have those all linked. So these never leave my side, love them, stay in my caddy. All right, let me put these back in the box. Now I'm pulling out what's in the left-hand side hole. This is, I'm even going to give y'all some really interesting, I'm showing you everything in here, okay? You're going to see everything. All right, so this is what is in the hole next to that. So, you already know, I don't go anywhere without my pokey tool. This is what I like to use. I used to have a different pokey tool. I had one that had like a really long nib on it, and I loved it, but they stopped making it, and so I found this one. This one comes in a three-pack from Fiskars, and it is not called a pokey tool. They're actually embossing tools. They have three different nibs on um, one end, and they have three different nibs on the other end. This one is the pointy nib, and I love it. I use it constantly. I even like how it's kind of ergo, you know, how it's kind of fit your fingers, but this is the one that stays with me all the time. Love it. You can emboss with it, and you can also poke with it, and that's another thing I like. This is the perfect size for embossing, like on your scoreboard. You just get one. This right here you'll use all the time, I promise, and you already probably do. If you follow me for any length of time, y'all probably already have that pokey tool. Bone folder. Okay, I didn't use one of these for years. I was one of those people that was like $19 for a bone folder, and I think they've gone up. Everything has. I don't know, but I remember thinking, I'm not paying that for a bone folder when I can pay like a dollar for a bone folder, and I didn't for many, many years. Well, then 
I was on a design team and they sent me one as part of the team package. And I was like, what? This is incredible. It really is a game changer. So if you want to invest in something that you'll use forever, that you'll use forever, this is a good one. So 19, I think it's, it might even be $22 now. I don't remember, but they're very worth it. And you can um, score with it. You can yeah score with it, emboss with it, and you can crease with it. And you have these creasy ends. It's nice and sharp on the end, or you can crease with the side of this. And it's the same material. Matter of fact, this is a Dress My Craft one, as is this. It's the same material as my ergo um, and I love it I love it I also usually have the pencil one in let me grab that one I also typically keep this in my um caddy this is the like the pencil point one. it's not quite as sharp as a pencil but it comes to a point and you can score with it as well but I find I don't use it for scoring as much because the end is a little bit wiggly but I'll tell you what I did discover it works perfect on my touch screen for my scan and cut and I've lost my little pen. I'm always losing those little pens that come with it. So I move this to where my scanning cut is because I can tap around the screen really well with it. And it's perfect when I'm filming for me to have a little pointer. So that's why I use that one over there. But it's normally in my caddy. All right, so move that over here. Okay, I did a replacement. I did an old swapperoo. These are the Cutter B nonstick scissors. I normally had the yellow handles. I've used them for years. We had been wanting to add these to our store. We hadn't for the longest time. We finally did. And so I decided, you know what? I deserve a new pair of cutter bees and I'm going to get these. So either one, the yellow handle or this, I like to keep a fussy cutting scissor near me because you know I'm going to use one all the time. So these are my fussy cutters. These guys I like to keep for other things. These are my little nips. You just never know. These are really good for cutting foam. They're really good for cutting like foam squares in half and things like that. They're good whenever you have foam hang off the edge of something and you need to trim it. This is perfect for that. Um, even though these are nonstick, I still don't want to use them on foam because I use them for fussy cutting and I don't want them to get gunky. You can use them and clean them, no issue. But these are the ones I use for stuff like that. I also like these for cutting twine or, you know, thicker twine, baker's twine, or even like actual twine. Um, I love to keep these handy all the time. They're more utilitarian, if that makes sense. Think of these as your fabric scissors and these as your work scissors, if that makes sense. Okay, pens, pencils, these guys. Most of these you send to me. <laughs> you guys send me pens and pencils all the time. This is one I have literally had in here forever and a day. I can't even remember. I probably could look back and see. There's nothing special about it. It's just a pencil that I grabbed and started using. But I like to keep a pencil. I'm actually a person that uses a pencil most of the time because I like to erase because I have terrible handwriting and I don't want to be stuck with it. But when I get a pen, these are super cute. So sometimes I'll keep a pen in there as well for making notes and things like that. These are for when I need to make ruler marks or fine centers or whatever. I like to keep some pencils handy. This one's cool. Someone sent this to me. I'll show you this. This one's cool because it has this um, twist up eraser. The only thing I find is when you erase with it, I guess the way I erase... I kind of shut it down. Do you see when I go back and forth, it kind of takes it back down. So be mindful of that. But it is cool to have that much eraser when you need, when you have big mistakes like I do. Okay, let's go to this guy. So this is my finger blade. And I didn't use this for you. I'm, the story of my life is I don't buy things when they first come out. I wait. And it's the same in my store. I don't get things as soon as they release them. I test them first. And this is one of those things I waited and waited to get. But now I'm glad I have it. It's a craft blade. So you can see the blade there. Okay. And the way you use it is you put your finger in it and you kind of can use it like a pencil. It kind of feels like a pencil the way you hold it. And I really, really like this. Um, I've had some people tell me that it's, that they've had trouble because they've cut themselves with it. But I'll tell you something, you can cut yourself with any one of these blades. You've got to be very mindful of that. And I try to do that. I try to be very careful, but it is different. It is different. But this is the one I started using and I really love it. It's the one I keep all the time. And if you have hand dexterity issues or if you have trouble putting enough pressure on a blade, this one's really good because what it does is it changes the pressure from this, like press like this, to allow you to use your whole hand kind of to get that pressure. Now, I believe in more passes, less pressure, okay, when you're using these things. That's a safety way to do it. But I still think this is a great one. So this is the one I keep right at hand. My quick stick, what can I say? This guy and me have been together a long time. If you don't know what a quick stick is, this little cap comes off. Well, it pulls straight off. I always do that. It pulls straight off. Inside of here, you can see that little um, bubble there, that little um, tip. 
inside of here is a putty, much like poster putty, if I say it like that. And what it does is you can squeeze it out and get a little bead of it here. And when you have something little you need to pick up, this guy will just kind of pick it up and let you move it around. And what I really like about it is in the end, a lot of people don't know this is here. In the end, you have this tool so that when you pick something up with this and you move it to where it goes, you can use this tool to hold it down and lift off and it'll stay there. It's pointy on one end, flat on the other. I always caution you to put that point inside because I have poked myself with it being sticking out of my caddy. I also try to put it in my caddy like this, a couple reasons. If it's in like this, it's clear and I can't see it. But if it's in like this, I can find it pretty easy. All right, making a mess over here. Tweezers, twizers. Okay, why do we call them twizers? Here's a good time to tell you. Um, back in the day when we worked, um, we were in the cottage, Vince did all of our packing and shipping. And I went in one day and he had written on the box of these twizers instead of tweezers. I don't know why. And I, I don't know, Vince is a very good speller, very good reader, but he wrote twizers. And I walked in and I went, we carry twizers? And he was like, what? And I said, this is twizers. And he's like, oh my goodness, how did I do that? And it was so funny. So since then I've called them twizers, but they are tweezers. And these are reverse tweezers. Now here's what that means. On a regular tweezer, which I also keep handy because you never know when you're going to need them, and I do use them interchangeably. Um, on regular tweezers, when you squeeze, they close. On reverse tweezers, when you squeeze, they open. Now, there's a learning curve for these, okay? You know if you've bought these. There's a learning curve because I, I want to put something down and squeeze. I don't know how it is. It's just I want to go... I want to basically pick something up and squeeze when I need to release and then let go. It's the weirdest thing. But you do get used to it, okay? Your brain does get used to it, and you remember, oh, it's open opposite, okay? And then these, I really like these. I want to say these are Dress My Craft. Yeah, there it is, Dress My Craft. And they have this, it's not Teflon on the end. This is like maybe acrylic on the end. But I really like them, and one thing I like is how specific that point gets, and I find that I use these a pretty good bit too. So I keep one of each kind in my caddy, and this, this is TMI. This is YouTuber stuff, okay? So I film videos, and I have fingernails. <laughs> And sometimes I'll go to film a video and I should have trimmed my fingernails the day before and I haven't. And this allows me to trim them before I film a video. And I did trim mine recently, you can tell. I've just decided keeping my nails short is the way to go because it's just too much trouble for me to get them done. I say that, you never know, this summer I might start getting them done again. But I keep these handy because if I need to film a video and I need to trim my nails right away. So now you have an insider secret to that. All right, we got more holes to look at. Let's go into the next little section. This next section is a little more random. Um, it is the section above. Let me see if I can show you this. So this is the this is the first section. This is this the next section above it. Okay. So here's what I keep in here. I love to keep my big Tim Holtz um, shears in here. I like them because I know what they are when I see the handle. I can rec I can recognize them easily, and I use them for everything. And I don't know how to describe this to you. Let me show you. Let's say you're going to cut a card or you have a card that something's hanging over the edge and you need to cut it off. There's something about being able to do this motion with your hand staying out of the way and the scissors doing the work that make these the best thing. Also, they are utilitarian. They are left or right-handed because this is the same, so you can flip it either way. They are um, non-stick and they are serrated. I don't know if I said that. They are serrated. These are the scissors you'll look for all the time. You'll like, where's my Tim Holtz shears? Where's my shears? I promise you'll love these. Matter of fact, we even have people who aren't crafters that come in and see these and get them and put them in their um, like their junk drawer at home or their scissor drawer and use them for everything. They're fantastic. So those stay handy all the time. Uh, nail files. You might think this has to do with the uh, fingernail clipper, but it does not. I like to keep a nail file for whenever I need to file something smooth. And here's what I mean by that. Let's say I'm making an album and I want to glue um, cardstock onto chipboard. You know, sometimes it's not exactly perfect. You might have that little hangover, right? I like to take a nail file. I'm not going to do it now because it'll make a mess. And scrub down like this. And it makes that paper become one with the chipboard. And I love that smooth edge. There's also other places you find you need a nail file. Sometimes if you're working with wood things or... Um, if you just maybe got some glue somewhere, you need to kind of file off the edge or something like that. This is perfect. And these, I like to keep handy. You can see they've been used a good bit. I do run through them kind of often because I will wear one out. These two are doing pretty good, but I keep them in my caddy as well. This is a pen somebody made for me that I just keep in there. I think it's beautiful and I grab it to make notes here and there. Sharpies. Okay. 
we use Sharpies quite a lot. Um, not so much for like crafting, but if I'm making a template for you guys, like if we do one on the scoreboard and then we need to make the lines for you to see on camera, we use these. And I like the big nib and the small one, depending on what I'm doing. So we try to keep Sharpies handy. Um, sometimes I get a collection more than I need, and this is probably that, but we know where Sharpies go, so we stick every one we find in that hole so we have them. So I do keep those handy. These two are dry erase markers. So we have a um, board in the room that we try to use um, to keep notes or if we, like if we're doing like um, Christmas in July and we're doing a video every day, we'll kind of put a theme out for every day or something like that. And we use that board for that. So we keep those handy. You're probably wondering what this guy is. So this was sent to me by a subscriber and it's pretty cool. I want to show you. Um, it is called, it's made by Tovia and it has, I don't want to touch it. I'm going to use this to point. Right inside here is our blade do you see it on both sides that faces toward me? And what you do is when you want to open a box, you stick this down on the other side of the tape and you pull it and there's no blade open or exposed to you. There's also up here, well, that's not really a blade. That's the, the dull side of the blade. And I don't think you can change them out. Somebody asked me that. I don't see how you can, but this is called, oh, here we go right here, an SK2. And it's just a box opener blade, and we love it. Um, she sent us a stack of these, and we all put one at our desk. I do put it in my caddy upside down because I don't want that blade anywhere near anybody. But I keep that handy. Highlighters. Why do I have highlighters? There are times when I need them. I make a lot of notes, right? When I'm taking, when I'm, when I'm planning a project or how I'm going to film, I'll make a lot of notes, and sometimes I just want to highlight something. So these are just handy. Keep them close. All right. The next section. In my next section, I keep these guys. I want these on my desk near me at all times. There was a time I used to put these in a cabinet, like I would keep all my punches not at my desk, and I discovered I need these too often for that. So I keep my large, um, not large, my angle punch. This is my stub and scallop punch, and this is my corner rounder. These are the ones I keep with me all the time. They stay in that little caddy, and they stand up like this. And what I love about them is because these little guys will close down, I can store them really neatly in there like that. So I love this because they open like this when you use them and then they close flat for storage. These stay with me all the time. And I can tell when they're missing because they leave a pretty big hole in my little caddy here. All right, the next thing I keep, let's go to my final little section here are these guys. These are in the caddy in the back. And what I do, let me see if I can show you. What I do is like, here's the edge of the caddy. I hang this over like this and I hang this one over so they hang out the back and then my ruler sits in that um, spot as well. But I keep these handy. Again, I use them all the time. This is a hole punch. There's two different sizes sizes of holes here and here and it also sets my eyelets. If you'd like a video on this, I have a video showing you how to use this guy. We can link that one. This is my multi-tool. This one does um, five different holes. One, two, three, four, five. From 1 16th to 5 16th. And I like to keep it handy because you never know when you need it. It does like this. There's a new one of these coming out. We may or may not get it. It does like, um, I think it's already out, not coming out, but it's out. I want to say it does like stars and hearts and different kinds of shapes. We may get that one. I'm not sure. I'm still, I'm st I told you I do everything late. But I do like this guy. I like to keep him handy. And then, of course, my ruler. I cannot be without this ruler. I honestly should just put it on a string and wear it around my neck. I like this one to stay close. As a matter of fact, if you did watch my room tour, I'm going to put that down so it's not blinding you. If you did watch my room tour, you would see that I have this ruler in my caddy, but I have another section that I keep other rulers in that I do use and I reach toward, but this is the one I want at my hand, right? So this is what sits at my desk to my right-hand side so I can grab it as soon as I need it. All of these items that I just showed you. I hope that was interesting. I think it would be interesting for me to uh, see what other people keep right at their desk. Um, and again, if I go to a crop, you can pretty much bet everything in here is going to go. I may not take highlighters, but I might. Probably wouldn't take a box cutter. That probably wouldn't be something I need. But pretty much all of this goes with me. Um, if I, even if, like if I'm teaching a class, not, not maybe so much a class if I have a kit, I might not need all these. But I like to take a lot of this with me because it's stuff I really lean to and really want to have to use all the time. So I hope that was helpful. I thought that would be neat. If there's something else like that you'd like to see, maybe you'd like to see me do a breakdown of, I don't know, what inks I use. I don't know. Whatever you think, let me know, and we'll try to get those videos filmed. I just noticed I put this in upside down. I always put my pokey tool with the pokey side down, too, because I don't want to get poked. 
All right, guys, thanks so much for being here today. Don't forget, you can subscribe so you don't miss my videos. Just click that red subscribe button. It is free to do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. That not only lets me know you liked it, but it also lets YouTube know that I'm doing a good job. And if you think that I am, give me a thumbs up and let them know. Thanks so much for being here today. And until next time, bye now. Mm -hmm.